Hi guys, welcome to another testing. Today what we're going to be doing is testing the new wishbone idea we've come up with. What we want to do now, we've already tested the strength. In the previous videos you will see we could get that easily up to 150 kilos. We now want to cycle it as many times as possible to see if the components can withstand constant cycling as what would happen when you load and shoot and load and shoot. So we're going to be doing that with the same pneumatic system we used to test our uh, loading and reloading and cycling of our spear guns. In this case, our piston, you'll see it over here, only has 180 millimeters of travel. So I've got to make really short rubbers to keep it within those constraints. I've zeroed it just by eye and we're now going to pull on it. We've basically zeroed the scale. As we know, a 16 mil rubber max stretch gives you about 60 kilos. Remember, that's a closed loop. We're going to be halving it by pulling in one direction. So we need to get about 30 kgs, yeah, 30 kilos. And uh, that will show me how much travel I need. Those of you who mentioned in the past that uh, I don't use our way, I agree with you. I should be, especially in this case. We have these elastics at maximum stretch and I need to protect myself. Let's stretch it. We need 30 kgs. There we go. That's what the rubber would be at maximum stretch. Quite small diameter. These are 16 moles. I'm going to leave it there and make a mark on the paper. That's just a rough eyeball distance. Measuring that, I get about 150. So that's more than adequate. Let me back it off now. We had about 150 mils, more than adequate. So we'll be using that in our jig. And in a week or two's time, we should have it up and running. Stand by for part two in the same video. Sorry to interrupt. Uh, I hadn't mentioned we'd actually switched over from 16 mil to 20 mil rubber. The 20 mil obviously can handle a much greater load. So we've been cycling now with 20 mil rather than the 16 mil. We're getting 30 odd kgs in a straight line. You'll double that, so it's close to 80 kilos of normal load on a gun. Um, let's carry on with the rest of the video. So, in a few days, we managed to get the hydraulics to start cycling. And uh, the pressures we need to get 30 plus kgs just on a piece of rubber. This is going to be the one we're going to insert there. We're going to shorten that so the travel is pretty much the same as what we got here. The big problem here was to get the appropriate travel to get this to work. We're then going to set it up in a water tank and the whole device will be operating within this tank. Stand by for the next part. Hi guys, welcome to our third or fourth part on our wishbone testing. The wishbone is set up inside this glass tube. We're going to put water in it later. We've now set it all up with the scale, showing the weights. We've already got pre-tension there of about seven kilos. And as I open this, the air should cycle. There we go. So that's what's going to be happening. We're going up to about 35 kilos. We're going to cycle this for many hours, but in water. We're going to fill this up with salt water, not quite full, halfway, and let it run underwater to simulate being used in the sea. Once uh, this is run, 15 to 20 hours, we'll then slowly ramp the pressures up and uh, see how much load it can take. There you go, stand by for the next section. Just adding water, hopefully there's no leaks, my o-rings should seal. See how it goes. We've got the cycle going. Uh, we're coming down to about six or seven kilos and up to about 36. And uh, we'll keep this going for many hours. And if we don't have a failure, we'll slowly increase the pressures 
and see how well it does do. We have high hopes for this new type of wishbone bead. We've set this up quite a few times now over the last few days. We had an issue with the load cell failed on us, many years old. So we had to bring in a new one, reprogram it, recalibrate it, and we changed the screen slightly. So now it reads kilos, not 0.1 of a kilo. We had it, I think, to three decimal points. Not really necessary for our application here. So we've set it again to 34 kilos, 33 kilos at maximum. It's still got slight tension when it gets to the bottom and we're cycling it at the same speed. We're not getting more than about an hour and a half or so. So about 3000 cycles before it fails. We're not failing on the wishbone, which is what we're testing, but the rubber itself wears out. Um, I'll show images of these and show exactly what happens. The slightest bit of sharp edge on the bead starts to create a friction zone. And with the cycling that much, even though it's kept wet in water, we are having wear. Even on the top pieces that are smooth stainless steel, there's no sharp edges whatsoever. They're highly polished. Even in those zones, we're having wear. In retrospect, two or 3,000 cycles is way more than you're ever gonna do. I don't think anybody's gonna get more than two or 300 cycles out of a rubber without changing it. So we're at this stage now where we're doing multiple runs of continuous work. And I think this is the third wishbone bead we're now trying. We've still got another three. They've been soaking for a few days in salt water. They still got to be trimmed and set in the rubber and we'll go through the same cycling before we even consider putting these into production. Hope you enjoyed that. Stand by for the next. Quick update. This specific run now is on the third or fourth wishbone and uh, we're pushing it at maximum and we've got about 12,000 cycles and it's still going. 